Hi and welcome to Neat AI. This week I coded up Particle Life and explored the behavior that emerges when you let basic interaction rules live on small and large populations. I created an incubator to create custom fitness functions and an engine that could do justice to the emergent complexity. I like the look of these, so I set myself the goal of getting around 50,000 particles swirling around and attempting to replicate these structures or something close to it. At its core is a control matrix, and the movement of the particles are controlled by it. The values it contains tell the particles whether or not they should move towards or away from other particles, and at what rate. The values are used in the force calculation, which makes up the acceleration value used by a particle to adjust its velocity, and hence its position. In this example, there is a value of 1 at the junction of the two red circles. This means that when red particles interact, they strongly want to be near each other. The green particles also have a 1 at their junction, as do the blues, which simply means that particles of the same colour are going to clump together. And that seems to be what's happening. Red particles are also attracted to green particles, but at only half the rate of the red-red interaction. This means that groups of red particles will attach themselves to groups of green particles, but they won't mingle as their preference is to stick with particles of the same colour. Green particles are slightly repulsed by reds and attracted to blues. And blues, well, they don't like anyone. Being slightly repulsed by both, they tend to move away from greens and reds while forming their own clumps. And this is why you will see different groups coming together. They tend to move because of the slight repulsive force. Greens, for example, will move away from reds, but not at a rate fast enough to break the connection to them. The same thing happens with the blues when the greens manage to grab a hold. The blue group now tries to move away, but can't break the hold of the green group, which in turn can't break the hold of the red one. And you get these chains of coloured groups moving across their environment. Each particle is checking every other particle in their environment, which come within range to work out their next position. I could have just set this to something like 100 pixels and been done with it, but instead I added a second control matrix to the mix so I could vary the distances at which different particle pairs can interact. For now, every value is set to 100 pixels, but I can vary it so perhaps greens will interact with reds at a distance of 50 pixels, but reds won't interact with greens until they are 20 pixels away, just to add some additional complexity. When I was building this setup, I also wanted to be able to zoom in and out, control the separation of the particles, adjust their size, and I added a scaling factor for their acceleration so I could speed them up if I wanted. Even with this basic setup, you get some interesting behavior. But when I make a few tweaks to the control matrices, it really gets interesting. The changes I made were all random. 
I was just playing with the settings and seeing what might emerge. Even just entering random values generated a lot of complexity. But what about the settings needed to get something spirally? 50,000 particles swirling around a galactic core. Exactly what are the matrix settings for something like that to appear? In order to figure this out, I decided to hand the task over to a genetic algorithm. I designed and built a sort of evolutionary incubator for the production of specific types of patterns I wanted to see emerge in particle life. The idea here is simple. Step one is to identify the type of pattern I wanted to see. Step two is to create a function which identifies those patterns and spits out a value which correlates to how close it's getting. A population of matrices uses this as a fitness function and evolves towards the solution over many generations. Being displayed here is a population of 20 matrix pairs covering both the attraction strength and interaction radius. After each generation, the top two are retained and cloned into the 18 remaining slots. Those clones then have their matrix values randomly tweaked. On occasion, I'll insert a completely random value into a cell just to introduce some diversity. The generation consists of a 1000 step simulation being run by each population member, at the end of which their fitness is assessed. As the generations pass, the population tends to evolve towards solutions which map to the required end goal. If I interrupt it, I can see what any member solution is producing for that generation. Some are good, some are not so good. The fitness function I created for this uses a ring and spiral detector that rewards particles arranged at a certain distance from a center and spread in angles around that center. Down at the bottom is a bar graph which displays the relative fitness of each population member every time it changes a new generation. I really wanted to do justice to particle life. I didn't want to simulate a space with just a few hundred particles. I wanted thousands, tens of thousands if possible. So I invested some time in creating an environment that could handle it. I tested it in a couple of ways. This isn't particle life. This is a simple gravity simulation. Each point is attracted to every other point and when I release them, those at the edges crash towards the center. There is no collision detection as I didn't need it, so they simply swirl around exerting influence over each other. I also chucked a Boyd simulation in there as well, a very poor Boyd simulation, but it managed to handle 50,000 items just fine. When the final generation is complete and a winner identified, I pop matrices into the environment engine and see what happens. What emerged were rings, spirals and clusters of various dimensions. They were all made up of the three different particle types. Typically the blue ones were on the outside, the rings were predominantly green and some of them had particles at the centre of the ring. But it wasn't what I wanted, so back to the incubator for another go. This time they all started moving, acting like cells exploring their environment. Let's have another go. One last time.
those long vertical ribbons with enormous green clusters. Particle life was originally known as clusters, so it's a fitting final attempt. I never did get my spiral galaxies. Something to continue to work towards, but I'm more than happy with the end result. Thanks for watching.